couple years ago, I started working on a film called Flesh and Blood um, that included my real biological father, who I hadn't seen in a really long time, um, who's currently uh, terminally ill. And it just you know, started having me reflect on uh, his life and um, my own life and being a dad and um, what would happen uh, if this were real. And so I, I, uh, I'm always inspired by my children as well, too. And so um, our stories that we tell each other and his imagination kind of collided with me thinking about these big existential things. And so I thought, oh, let's, let's go make a film about that. I've been calling it reality cinema. Started with my son Isaac, who's here actually, off to the side. It was a film that I made in 2012. We took it to Sundance and it starred him when he was two. And that's where I found my voice as a filmmaker and um, really stemming out of this obsession that I have with realism and authenticity in films. And I thought, how cool would it be if we were to build a whole film around uh, a little one? And so it was great that I had that experience under my belt with Isaac going into this film with Bodie and Nicole, um, because I, I knew we could pull it off and I know how to pull it off. And part of that is, like you mentioned, working with just about five folks um, who I've worked with consistently on all my films. So it's almost like we have like telepathy, you know, we all, <laughs> like my DP knows where to be and how to cover things and it really allows us to just be in the moment and um, explore what it's like to put real verite on screen um, mixed with this, you know, written narrative thrust, which is, you know, the space that we play in. I, Mark and I, we did a film called Clover and uh, one day he pulled me aside and asked me if I would be willing to play a magical angel in his upcoming fantasy reality film. And I jumped at the opportunity and uh, six weeks later we were off to Snowdonia, Wales. I especially love um, how Mark pushes past boundaries and uses elements from his real life to try and develop a new type of filmmaking he calls reality cinema. The Place of No Words is fantasy reality cinema, which expands his filmmaking style to the fantasy genre through Bodhi's imagination. Well, it's really cool. I mean, for me and B, in working in this way, like, we were really in these forests with real swords, and there was real magic in that forest. So just um, being able to go on this real adventure, in a way, you know, like, it wasn't just always set up like, a traditional way of shooting where we're approaching a scene and we're shooting coverage in a certain way. A lot of it was we had these fairies in the woods kind of having a little party and dancing. And then me and Bodhi would walk into it and come upon it. And so it's a, a mixture of us really experiencing things um, in real time in a real way and then pausing and refining those moments. I had so much fun working with you, bud. It was, uh, you know, the beautiful thing about working with kids and younger folks, and even Nicole, who's like traditionally trained, um, but still was bringing like a wide-eyed, youthful innocence. And it's really easy when you have that to to tap in and to be present mm -hmm. and to, explore things when you have these young folks who are constantly kind of grounded in what is actually really going on. And so much of my work really relies on that um, so that you can see and feel real emotions on screen. And Bodhi really, um, really, really brought it, you know, all the time was really, really, really there, and then gave his, his own version of a performance, for sure. Mm. 